usually, you know, somewhere close to the end of an interview loop as a solutions architect, solution engineer, whatever the role may be, you'll be asked to either present a business case study, a technical case study, or give a demo of a product that you're familiar with or the product for the company that you're interviewing with. So Nick is going to be walking us through that right now. All right. Can you see my screen? Accelerating yep. AI model development at Smart Foods. Yep. Okay. Uh, so just to set up the stage here, um, you'll be pretending to be the director of AI for Smart Foods or some other decision maker. And today I'll be showing you uh, Label Box, which uh, you're you'll be an analyzing for potential use in labeling data for a self-driving car use case. Awesome. Um, so, hey, Mohammed, uh, thanks for your time today. Uh, great to meet you. Um, today, I wanted to kind of take a deeper look into the platform that we had discussed last week. Um, you met with some of our team and gave us a high level overview of some of the needs at Smart Foods and you express interest in seeing the product in more detail. Um, this is the general agenda. Uh, first, we'll start really with the problems that you outlined last week. Make sure that we're aligned there. Mm -hmm. Then I'll talk briefly about the platform and segue into a demo, uh, specifically focusing on some of the tools that you're using already at Smart Foods. Uh, since you since you mentioned you're using Databricks as well. Uh, we'll start doing that demo out of Databricks. And then uh, we'll talk about next steps, how you want to evaluate the tool and with the free time at the end, open forum for any questions you might have. Uh, does this agenda sound good to you? Yeah, sounds good to me. I'm excited to see, uh, see the product. Awesome. Okay, so Mohammed. Last week, you gave us a very good outline of some of the goals and challenges you have at Smart Foods. It sounds like you want to deploy a more performant model for a self-driving food delivery cart by mid-2024. Um, one of the, the biggest goals you have is to make sure your model surpasses human level safety on roads. And then you also mentioned that your team is using an open source tool to do all of its data labeling right now. And it's kind of slowing your team down with some of that operational overhead. Um, is that a pretty good understanding of the challenges you're having at Smart Foods? Yeah, a hundred percent. That's, that's one of the, uh, you know, big challenges, I guess, to add on to that, um, you know, we just got word from our, um, our marketing and sales team that they're looking to expand potentially in other other regions. So uh, really looking to make sure that this is compliant, especially with GDPR, um, just because there's a there's a big demand for this uh, that we found in the EU. So we will also want to make sure that everything that we're doing is uh, GDPR compliant and you know compliant with those 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 uh, you know other other places that we're looking to operate in. Sure. Um, with regards to that GDPR compliance, are you particularly interested in data residency problems or things yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the biggest. That's probably the biggest one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely talk about that. Just right out the gate, I can tell you that Labelbox can be used in a GDPR compliant way, and we actually have a native support for AWS S3. So you can Perfect. actually keep your data in country where if you're in Europe, keep it in Europe, uh, comply with GDPR that way. And the data actually does not have to leave the country. So uh, mm -hmm. we definitely do um, keep an eye on that. Awesome. Okay. So Mohammed, your team is already working with an open source platform and I think a lot of this will resonate pretty well with what you're familiar with, just with annotating data. Uh, Labelbox is an enterprise grade platform for training data 
in different formats, whether that's image, video, audio, and we're also adding new formats that are specific to different industries like healthcare here in DICOM um, and self-driving cars. So we're, we're actually working on 3D point cloud support as well as other um, specialized annotation for um, different sensors like uh, even radar data. Um, but basically this platform is a more robust annotation tool than what you see in the open source world. And it allows you to connect your internal and external labeling teams to it. So you could really collaborate on creating the training data you need for your AI models. Here's a screenshot of our annotation tool. Very simple. It's kind of like Photoshop in the cloud. You just draw your annotations, uh, build out an ontology for your particular project, and you can coordinate your workforce through our, our tools online. Um, it's completely web-based, so you don't need to install any software or maintain upgrades. So I know you, you mentioned your team is dedicating a lot of your sprint time mm -hmm. to like fixing bugs and making sure your development environment is up to par. Uh, we manage that as a software as a service platform. And uh, I also want to point out that we support open data formats, um, JSON, all the annotations belong to you. We don't have a proprietary format or anything like that. If you want to get them out of label box and store them on your own systems, you can. Um, any questions on this so far? No, this is uh, pretty straightforward. Awesome. So today, what I want to show you is how easy it is for your data scientists and engineers who are already comfortable in Databricks to work with the Labelbox platform to get a data set annotated for machine learning. And uh, we actually have a formal partnership with Databricks. So we continue to improve this integration every day. And um, most of our successful customers are able to get in there and be productive within a week, uh, rather than having to wait many, many months to get into production, just because this integration is so easy to set up. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll, for this demo, what we're going to see is I'll start with some data that's sitting in my data lake, in this case, AWS. And then as a data scientist, send that information over to Labelbox to create a labeling project. And then I'll actually do some labeling and then export those labels back into Databricks. So we, we take that full uh, round trip back to your platform of choice, which is Databricks today. Um, you mentioned GDPR compliance before. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just want to point out when information flows between these platforms, we're actually just sending the URLs to these files and not the raw bits of the, the images. So uh, that is a much more secure way of kind of transferring the information between Databricks and Labelbox. And then when it comes back to Databricks, you'll get it in that native format that your data scientists are familiar with. Um, you'll get it in a Spark data frame. All right, um, let's hop into Databricks and kick off this demo. So in Databricks here, I have a simple notebook where I have a table here from my data lake um, that lists a bunch of images that my data team has collected and they want to get labeled for their machine learning project. Um, as you can see, these are just URLs of images sitting in an S3 bucket. Um, and we also have some other columns of data here. Um, so Mohammed, when, when you're collecting images from the field, do you also collect metadata along with those images, like uh, the model of the camera or the time of day of the collection, things like that? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, we do. Okay, awesome. So what this is showing you is uh, that this integration will have full support for metadata that may come with your images. So in this case, I have some toy uh, metadata fields, uh, just numbers, strings, and dates. And we'll actually pull those into Labelbox so you can um, browse those images through our catalog. Uh, so to do this, all I have to do is use the Labelbox connector for Databricks and supply it an API key and create a new data set in Labelbox. So I'm just going to add a two there to make sure I don't overwrite a previous one that I just created. Um, and with that data set, we're going to send it all of these data rows. So we're just going to pass in that table, and then the Labelbox connector will process all those rows and send them over uh, to Labelbox. So in just three cells, we've um, created a project in Labelbox and loaded those images into it so that we can actually start the labeling process. So if I refresh this page, um, we should now see the uh, assets load here in the demo data set. Um, looks like it's still doing a little bit of work on the Databricks side, so um, should come in any minute now. And anyway, quick question, um, going back to the Databricks side, which library, is, is that Pandas that you're using? I think I saw the Pandas data frame, I mean the library. Yeah, in this okay. case, uh, there is some uh, some Pandas involved with the parsing of those data rows. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, but that's awesome. kind of done under the hood by the connector. So you don't have to mm -hmm. instantiate it yourself. Okay. Got it. Got it. Awesome. So it looks like that job finished. Uh, if I refresh this, uh, there we have our 10 data rows. Um, again, pointing to the images sitting on S3. So if this were a GDPR use case, those images would be loading from Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and they would never leave Europe. Um, so we have our images, and you can see the metadata has been brought in uh, very clean here. Um, and the benefit of having your metadata with your assets in Labelbox is now you can actually search through all of your data rows using these key metadata tags. and. Mm -hmm. Um, it just makes it easy for your data scientists to visually browse and understand the data set. Um, for instance, like one of the challenges you mentioned is that your self-driving car doesn't perform well in rainy conditions. Well, you can um, tag your images if they're collected on rainy days, have that as a metadata field, and then assemble a new data set that's specifically uh, focused on rainy images and get that labeled. So uh, metadata is super helpful and kind of having it side by side with that visual browsing experience here in the catalog uh, allows data scientists to accelerate their uh, data discovery and curation. Mm -hmm. Cool. So now we we have the data set in Labelbox. I want to show you how easy it is to set up a project as a non technical uh, a non technical person who might have domain expertise in that field for labeling. Um, oftentimes, you you have experts who are working with the data, but they don't want to spin up a a Python interpreter to set up a project or things like that. So right. we can do this all through the UI. And um, let's call this a demo project. Um, I'm going to select that we're labeling some image data. And um, we're going to ignore some of these extra toggles for now. They're, they're a bit more advanced stage for project management uh, when you're interested in managing the quality of your final labels. Um, but we can revisit that later if 
you have some questions about quality control. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing we need to do is to queue the, the data set for labeling. So we're going to select that data set that we just added, label box. Okay. And then we're going to create a uh, ontology and labeling interface here. So um, this screen right here shows me a library of ontologies that I've created already. Um, I actually have pre-made an ontology here for, um, for self-driving cars. So I'm going to select this ontology. And now I have a preview of some of my images in that data set, along with this ontology um, that makes it really easy to test the ontology and see how, uh, how it works with that data set I have just added. And maybe I realize um, that I'm missing something in this ontology. I could easily go in here and just add different objects to this. So again, um, not requiring any code here. This is super accessible to um, not only data scientists, but domain experts who, who can help with creating your ontologies for your images. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we added the ontology. Let's actually get a couple of these images labeled. So um, here, label box actually will distribute the labeling tasks to all the different labelers on your project. In this case, since I'm the only person involved, I'm getting all those images. Um, but we have a system on the back end that manages the work allocation. So you don't have to worry about people labeling the same image twice or um, not having any work sent it'll to just their designate it, it'll just designate it to whoever. Exactly. Okay, got it. Um, so the the labeling interface is super simple. Um, I'm not sure how how this compares to the open source tool you have, but I'd, I'd love to get your thoughts on it as you kind of see me uh, show these different capabilities. But we have full support for the most common um, annotation types like polygons. So if I want to label the road here, as a polygon, um, if I want to do some segmentation masks here and do like pixel perfect outlines of different objects, I could do that. Uh, I'll do this really quickly with my mouse and keyboard here. Um, but we also have support for an auto segmentation tool that can um, intelligently identify the pixels for this object and, and do it all in in one go. So it, in reality, your labeler won't be spending this much time to label it, but I'm just showing you that yeah. you could do it. Um, yeah, I was just about to ask ask that because I feel like if, you know, it's a even busier picture than this, you know, that might take, take some time, but. Yeah, so we have this uh, auto segment tool here yeah. that uh, should make it easy to um, quickly identify object so there you go i just drew that square there and it oh, okay. identified yeah. that uh truck that's pretty cool yeah so um we can go through this really quick let's add some weather tags here we support classifications objects um and uh, as annotation types so when you get that json output you'll you'll get the coordinates for all these objects Mm -hmm. um, the uh, image files for those masks on images, uh, on segmentation masks, and you'll get the annotation uh, classifications. Cool. So your labelers would go through this. They would submit all of the annotations. And once it's done, uh, when you go back into Labelbox, you can actually quickly preview those annotations in the catalog. So um, let's take a look over here. This is a fully labeled data set. Um, you can, at a glance, kind of see which 
which annotation types exist in different assets and drill down on those. Um, and this helps with your data selection process if you're trying to identify the best data to train your model for the next run. Okay, so now we've got our data labeled in LabelBox. Let's get that back into Databricks. Uh, it's super simple with the connector. All we have to do is instantiate another connector client and provide a project ID, which uh, we just copy from uh, the website here. So if I come over to my project, mm -hmm. grab that project ID, paste that in here. Um, and then we call get annotations. And now Databricks will pull in a Spark data frame of all the annotations that we created. Uh, we get a, a set of metadata about those data rows, like who created that annotation, uh, what was the date of that annotation. And then here is where the real money is. Um, you get the label, um, the label column with all those classifications and objects outlined in JSON. So you can parse this information, feed this to your machine learning models and create really compelling uh, computer vision AI pretty quickly. Awesome. Yeah, and we also have some additional helper methods to clean this data up. Uh, for instance, we could parse out some of these objects and classifications into their own columns. Mm. So a lot of data scientists are more comfortable here working with the columns. Um, and by having all of your objects in queryable columns, you can now do things like query your data lake for specific images that meet uh, an annotation criteria, like yeah. se selecting all the images with clear weather. Um, so I want to pause there. I know we covered quite a bit with the movement of data and annotation. Do you have any questions or thoughts on how this works within your workflow? Um, I mean, this honestly, like, looks like this can speed up our entire process, um, you know, 10x, right? Um, I really like in LabelBox the ability to, um, I forget, I think the key command was something R to like do like the auto detection auto labeling and stuff mm -hmm. really really love that because right now that open source software um you know it it just takes hours and you know our investors are really really you know you know on our butts to 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 try to you know get the get the right amount of data and whatnot to to get our models uh working so that we can we can actually go out and deploy and I think that this could definitely um save us a ton of time um and really solve for solve for our, our, our business use case awesome yeah i i'm glad you mentioned that uh, i also wanted to point out we we do support the ability to connect your models to the platform mm -hmm. so as you train your models to recognize objects you can have them help you label new oh, assets okay so we call this model assisted labeling and it creates this reinforcement loop where as your model gets better, your labeling gets faster and you just create a, a synergistic flow. Um, so now mm -hmm. you can produce even better data quicker and train your models and tweak them. Awesome. Yeah, no, this 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 seems great. Is is there any way that we can get a, like a trial or something to, to play around with this for, for a little bit? Yeah, yeah, we can we can actually set you up with a a managed free trial. So what okay. we like to do is um, identify a use case that you have. In this case, it would be your self-driving car project. It mm -hmm. sounds like um, maybe identify some uh, some demo data that you'd you'd be able to put in the platform, and then for sure we can yeah. we can work with you to get that first project going in uh, in about a month. That sounds great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we can. We can talk to um, 
uh, John Smith, the uh, the account rep that you've been working with, get that set up and and uh, get you into the platform by the end of the week. Awesome, that sounds great. And and just to reinforce um, the the success that some of our customers have had, uh, these these are um, heavy Databricks customers that have used the Labelbox connector and mm -hmm. our big Labelbox users. Um, using model assisted labeling, uh, this one company was able to reduce their labeling time by more than 50%. And this other brand here was able to actually accelerate their marketing team with content creation and uh, recommendation systems. Um, so awesome. if you are interested in more case studies, you can visit them here at this URL. Definitely. And um, yeah, that's that's it for the presentation. Uh, we already talked about setting you up with a managed free trial. Um, would also love to understand from your perspective what your timeline is for evaluating and then making a decision on on a tool like this. Yeah. So if we can get that uh, demo spun up, you know, by the end of the week, like you said, we'll reach out to John and get that figured out. I honestly think that, you know, my team, we probably need maybe like, maybe like two or three weeks to, to play around with this, you know, see how it works, see how it performs. And then I think from there we can, we can talk pricing and, uh, you know, make a decision. Awesome. And who would, who would some of the primary contacts be for the, the free trial uh, part of the evaluation? Yeah. So I'll, um, I, I would definitely be, you know, the, you know, the, the primary, you know, point of contact and whatnot, but um, myself, and then um, I can get my, uh, my executive assistant also to kind of facilitate, you know, some of the back and forths and set up any, any additional meetings. And then I can get my, uh, my lead data scientist on this as well. Awesome. Yeah. yeah happy to meet them and, and provide guidance uh, through the trial as necessary. Um, any any other questions or comments from your side, Mohammed? No, I think that is uh, that's it. I, I look forward to uh, to testing this out. Awesome. Well, thanks, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Yep, you too. All right, end scene. John, uh, I know that you did a lot of a lot of talking there, and you know, showcasing label box and data bricks and whatnot, and. I think you did a phenomenal job there. Um, how, how, how do you think it went? How do you think it went? What do you think went well? What do you think you could have improved on? Um, curious, curious to know. Sure. Um, I, in my delivery this time, I, I think I kind of stumbled over a few sentences here and there, just nerves. Um, but yeah. that happens on demos and you just got to power through it. Um, one thing I always have been trying to improve on is, is spacing my questions at the mm. correct time. Yeah. I think maybe when I first delivered the demo, uh, I probably spent maybe three minutes without asking a question, probably at mm -hmm. the beginning and maybe, uh, just peppering questions here and there and, and improving that interactivity can always try that. Um, but otherwise I think it went pretty smooth. Uh, the, the demo actually worked, yeah. which is also <laughs> always positive. Yep. And, uh, you had really good questions. So I, I felt like it was engaging. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think I really liked that. That was one of the things I was going to say. Um, you made it very engaging. You spaced out. I think you spaced out the questions uh, really well, um, because I've been on calls as, you know, or, or like, you know, shadowing other calls with other, you know, essays, SEs, and they do the demo and it's just them talking for 10 minutes straight and the customer, like, you don't even know if they're engaged or not. Because half the time when you're doing a demo, especially in this virtual world, you know, everyone's got their camera off. They could be, you know, texting on their phone or something, right? So the fact that you're actually going out and you're engaging, like, that's, I think that's a really good practice. Uh, to follow follow with, um, and even when you're doing the interview, right? That's what they're. That's what hiring managers and you know the decision makers 
that's what they're going to look for when, you know, they're going to hire you. How engaged are you during your demos, right? I also really like that you included the slides. Um, I know some companies are like, we, we have a no slides culture and whatnot, but even those exact companies, when it comes to sales, they'll make that exception because they know that customers, they'll, they'll want to see the visuals, right? Before jumping into the demo, they want to see that data. They want to, you know, see those customer use cases, right? And slides are the best way to really, um, you know, showcase all that information. And it's a really good way to set up for your demo. Instead of you just jumping in, you're like, hey, let me tell you a little bit about label box. Let me tell you about what you heard. It really brings that like value add that, hey, we listen to you. This is the product. This is a solution. And here's how it's going to solve it for you. So I think you did a really good job there, um, Nick. And uh, yeah, I that that's it from feedback uh, for me. Um, for the viewers at home, if you enjoyed watching this, uh, please make sure to comment, like, and subscribe to the Exponent YouTube channel. And most importantly, share if you found this to be valuable or you think that someone else um, within your network would find this valuable. Um, but with that, we'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.